The Centennial History is brought to you by Edward C. Julian III, Mustang Fuel Corporation, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Joe M. Green Jr. Rockwell Fund Incorporated, Houston, Texas. Robert S. Kerr, Kerr Foundation Incorporated, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. General Douglas L. McBride, McBride Oil and Gas Corporation, and General Douglas L. McBride Museum. I'm Sam Donaldson. I've been reporting from Washington for more than 30 years, watching presidents and members of Congress conduct the public's business, and sometimes misconduct it. It's been a fascinating experience. But I'm convinced I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do any of this if, as a youngster, I hadn't spent three years at New Mexico Military Institute. And what did I learn there? The basics in literature, math, science, and language, to be sure. But the most important lessons came from living the life of a cadet, in having to learn discipline, I still say sir to presidents from force of habit, and in having to learn to work as a team. No man is an island? Well, no cadet can get by marching out of step or failing to pass inspection. A few youngsters don't stick it out at NMMI, but most do. And everyone who does that I've ever run into says the same thing. The Institute made me what I am today. The Institute has been shaping lives for 100 years now. Let's hope this proves to be only the beginning. Honor. A transition sets in the day a fledgling cadet puts foot on this North Roswell Hill. The imprint becomes everlasting. Before long, the harshness and confinement of military life dwindles. The cadet gazes westward toward El Capitan Peak, and he begins to feel aspirations foreign to him before. At the Institute, the cadet code is a signpost in every cadet's daily existence. He does not cheat, nor does he steal. He speaks the truth and he thinks the truth, which he sometimes finds a challenge to both heart and clarity of mind. The new cadet is not long in uniform before he begins to perceive the yawning and fearful gulf between the stain of dishonor and honor. Thomas H. Thompson, class of 27, Pulitzer Prize winner. On one of the last of our nation's violent frontiers, where competing forces of brigands rained bullets down upon each other as Billy the Kid, Pat Garrett, 
John Chisholm and others struggled in the Lincoln County War, in 1878, a man who would be known as the father of Roswell and the father of New Mexico Military Institute, Captain Joseph C. Lee, Tennessee born, Mississippi wed, an officer in the Confederate Army, arrived with his family. Captain Lee prospered in the mercantile trade, and the family grew in this frontier village. By 1890, Roswell boasted of 750 people, eight restaurants and saloons. It was just 90 miles from the nearest railroad. But the educational system in this dusty, dirty Pecos town had not improved. It was in a woeful state, evidenced in an 1889 territorial statute which established this qualification for teachers. That hereafter, in this territory, no person who cannot read and write sufficiently to keep his own record in either the English or Spanish languages shall be eligible to hold the office of school teacher. And so at the urging of Mrs. Mabel Doss Day Lee, in 1890, young Wildy Lee was enrolled at the Fort Worth University, a military school located in that city. The Lees were so impressed with Wildy's improvement that they invited the Commandant, Robert S. Goss, to Roswell to determine if Roswell was a suitable place to found such a school. Colonel Goss visited and in June 1891 committed to take on the challenge. A challenge which would result in the education of thousands of young men and women from all over New Mexico, the United States and beyond. An education set in the military environment imbued with the values of duty, honor, achievement.